Uh, hi guys, this is Slouchy Planet coming at you with the. <laughs> oh my god, this is like six months late or something. The No Game No Life uh, Why Short set review. Um, this is actually kind of in time for the English set review, so uh, we planned this all along, I promise. Anyway, uh, with me I've got the guy who records the show, uh, Tim Tom, the something or other. Hi. And uh, some guy who scrubbed out at Worlds. Hey man, I got third. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but uh, third is like the second place loser. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, uh, congratulations on uh, getting cucked. But uh, we're here to discuss uh, No Game No Life. Um, spoiler: I don't think it's particularly great, but in English, I think it's probably decent. Decent to relative terms. Anyway, uh, we're going to start with red because uh, I'm actually not sure why we're starting with red. I think someone suggested it, and we got we got down to that part of the slideshow, and then uh, Tim Tom was too lazy to move back up to yellow, so that's why we're starting on red. Uh, before we begin, a quick rundown of what we're going to use. Uh, I don't know if you has been on a cast since we quote unquote changed our uh, what do you call them our our grades, our ratings. We're just doing letter grades now because that's like, it's less ambiguous, I suppose. So, Wait, so like, uh, let me explain to me. I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm literally about to explain it for the benefit of everybody. So oh. uh, grade A, grade, grade A is like, uh, it's, it's good, right? That's, that's what we used to call good. Um, these are cards which are good enough to make you want to play the series or they're just super efficient or super powerful cards like uh brainstorms or literal ricky or uh literal us uh, that sort of effect um gets the a grade uh, basically anything you think is strong enough to make you think wow that's pretty good that's a that's a deck i want to play because of this card um and like you know anti-damage and stuff is also there uh b is like our playable plus i suppose but i think it's a little a little wider than that basically any card that you want in your deck because it f fulfills a good purpose can viably get a b um so uh like again uh less good brainstorms uh level one combos like shimikaze or uh uh would get in here and uh random early plays that uh you know can triple heal they might come here because they're cards that you're happy to have in your deck um and yeah, that's B. Uh, C is like cards you're happy to have in the set. So uh, if you ever need to fall back onto something like a drop search because you you don't have anything better, or if you have like a, a six six thousand five hundred beta because you're missing out level ones, that's something you give a C. <clears throat> or like if there's a if there's a combo that's not super good, but it's um, you're playing an empty climax or something, you might give that that card a C as well. Uh, D is basically vanillas and mediocre cards. So uh, Tim Tom's given most counters a D because he he's trying to make a statement. Uh, I give vanillas Ds because they're still vanillas. Basically, vanillas aren't bad; they're just Ds. Do you um, give them the D? And I yeah, I, I I give him the D, and uh, that's your them, one like, time. Minuses or something. So it depends, really. Like, whatever I feel like. By the way, that's the one time I'm gonna let you make that joke. Um, you're not allowed to make that joke anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> and F is like actually bad cards. Like, if someone's playing this card in their deck, it's making the deck worse. And uh, Fs tend to be. Not particularly controversial. I think we're actually very conservative with Fs. Only absolutely terrible cards have been given that grade so far. But if you really want to make a statement, I guess you can give something an F or a D or whatever. Anyway, uh, that's the system now. We're not you doing like meta or dank meme ratings or anything anymore. But um, yeah, let's get started. So the first card is uh, Steph, Inheritor of Beliefs. It's a 3 2 k When it comes to play, you check top three, add one to hand, ditch the rest, and climax combo. When this attacks, if you have the standby in the climax zone, you may ditch two cards from hand to waiting room. Uh, if you do, this gains 3k power, and uh, you deal X damage to the opponent, where X is the number of... What is that? That's the event, right? Yeah, the 1-1 one, one event. Yeah. 
yeah, so the 1-1 one, one event in red. Um, basically, that card is fine. It's not, like, broken or anything, but it does work with the standby uh, game plan that you kind of want to push. And I believe that card cantrips as well. I don't remember the exact text. It's, like, a check top four or something. And uh, it's, like, a... It's a support in memory. So I, I don't remember exactly what it is. We'll get to it soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's um, it's not a terrible card. Basically, it's a it's a playable card, and this is a relatively uh, stock light way of just doing two or three damage. And it's you know it's kind of customizable. I wouldn't call it customizable because you can't like backpedal. If you've gotten three in memory, I don't think you can easily get down to two. Is that right? Oh, uh, you can't, I don't think. Okay, so is there's there no way? way to do it whatsoever. I, I don't know, because... I don't think there's a way. I thought I, thought I might have overlooked something, but I don't believe you can. Um, either way, uh, what do you guys think about this this card? It's, it's, a, it's a fine it's, card. It's, a card. It's, uh, it's probably the best finisher in the set. If you're going to play a card I think like I that. Agree. Yeah, I think I agree with that. It's, uh... uh, it is uh, the reason to play standby and the reason to play the event. Uh, yeah, I think the so. Event, well, I mean, I don't know. This card is just like a finisher, right? It's pretty whatever. The event, the 500 global, okay, is man. pretty relevant. <laughs> Dude, your, your little nails in this set are so bad. The 500 global makes them be able to kill other people's level zeros. Oh, so you have to mm -hmm. keep them pluses every turn. Oh, mm -hmm. this card is... Yeah. Like, so, ideally, you don't have one event in memory. You have two, and then plus the 3k power. So it's, like, always 14k, which is, like, it, it's pretty sizable. It kills, like, most things. It's actually pretty nice. That sounds fine. Yeah. It it, it does stop people from just sitting on their early plays. Uh, so I do wish tricks. the power was cross turn, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Then you could like stand by it out combo and then have it like stay on the field. That'd be nice, but you know, that'd be pretty strong. Mm -hmm. It it would be uh it would be good. Anyway, um I think this is like I don't know if this is super broken or anything. I'm gonna give it probably a B plus. Oh that's right, we've got pluses and minuses just like in high school. So I'm giving it a B plus because I think uh costless burn th well, stockless burn three or burn two is pretty good. I like that sort of combo. Uh, it has good reach. The uh, the chance of it going through a fine, and uh, I don't know. Standby on a level three is really good. It means you can yeah. play standby without feeling like you need to play stand play standby from hand, except at the end game. Because um, stand playing standby sucks until the soul doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, like, uh, okay. so there's this, like, new standby combo in that Idol Master set, and, but it's on reverse, right? So that's a problem, and then B... I mean, Mad Madoka had that as well. Is it also on reverse? No. The Madoka one? No, the Million what Live one mean? is a level 3. Oh, oh, it's a finisher, my bad, yeah. my bad. Yeah, so Monica that's what I mean, one. like... Um, Monica doesn't have a standby climax. Yeah, all I'm trying to say is, like, this one's not on reverse... Like Alf said, it's free. I had this card for a long time, but um, unfortunately, it's been too long, and I think it's gotten creeped a little bit. I think like six yeah. months ago, I would give it a name. So what, you, what you're trying to say is Million Lives sucks, and that's fair enough. Yeah. Hmm. I don't actually mean that, but <laughs> anyway, that's... um. <laughs> that... That's Steph. Like that's a it's a fine card, probably the best top end in the set. But uh, we'll decide that once we get through all the rest of the cards. Um, um this next card, Jibril. Um, God, this card is such a vanilla looking up double R. Uh, three two, come and play heal, and when it's attacks, you can ditch two to burn one. Why? Yeah, I think this card's awesome. I think this card's actually awesome. This card is. This, this is just. It's just it's just a heal that has a really easy burn. I can't also, say anything bad about this card. Also very stock light, which is a theme here. That's not a good thing though, because you don't want everything to be stock light. You want some things to use stock and some things to use hand. And that way you can 
you know you have more reach if you need it but if yeah. both like because like yes yeah, steph like refreshes your hand she draws you cards so she's not actually as hand intensive as she might seem she, she is still hand intensive i'm not gonna deny that but she's better than she immediately looks whereas jibril doesn't do that she just she's a heal that you play and sometimes she'll burn one to make your damage a bit better and there is nothing wrong with that like that's those are good effects but this is also like nothing special it's just an above average effect and about another another above, above average effect another above average effect uh on one card and it's, it's fine i don't uh, see a problem it's with pretty it. good for you there, honestly no 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 i'm i'm not going to give this like i'm going to give this like a b i'm going to give this a b or like, probably just a b because i think, think steph is a better card so what's it called that the card cap until you got a ditch two burn one that has a can tripping effect and then you quickly realize that that is insane that is really cool that is actually really awesome so like obviously yeah, this yeah. heals then you have to dish two it's it's, it's kind of, it really does suck sometimes but what's really cool about it is like your healers because you always want to prepare for healers and then you can ditch mm -hmm. them really easily from your hand and this is like a really good standby, yeah, target, I, right? So, yeah, this card is is this Dace, I think. As that, it's like yeah, I agree. It's, it's same rating. I think it's one of the better healers you could ask for. Like I can't remember mm. too many healers that are better than this. Like just like healers what? that are meant to be healers in the deck, right? Not like healer finishers, which are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, if you if you categorize level threes into roles, like this one's your healer, this one's your you know auxiliary finisher. Like, if this card had a cantrip, like Steph did, or if Steph was the card that didn't cantrip, uh, actually, if that was the case, I think the deck would be a lot worse. But yes. basically, if this card did not heal, it would be a perfectly fine secondary finisher as well. That's how decent the second effect is in my eyes. But it's just a healer with a decent finisher effect. It's like a Misakura, basically. This it doesn't have to, and it doesn't have to, re and it doesn't have to, re doesn't it does, have to reverse. It, yeah, I think that's it does not have to reverse. Honestly. I agree, which is a which is good, I think. But at the same time, Misakura is significantly cheaper, especially on a card that doesn't cantrip. I mean, is a card uh, worth stock? They're, they're, uh, it's technically worth two stock. But in a deck that wants to be using, uh, like, Steph as your primary finisher, and in Railgun use Saturn as a primary finisher, I guess, um, one cost and one hand is better than two hand. Like I said, you don't want everything to be stock, no stock, and instead all hand. Because stock doesn't really have an upper limit aside from what you can generate, whereas hand has a very fixed upper limit, unfortunately. <laughs> Either way, uh, this card is good. Like, I, I think you should be playing it in any deck that plays red. And it's like a fine standby target, too. It kind of sits on field. That's cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, next card. Um, Steph, common sense person. Um, this is a brainstorm. When another character is reversed in battle, give a character... Um, when your other character, sorry, is reversed in battle, give one of your characters 1k for the turn. And tap to pay one brainstorm to salvage for every climax you hit. Um, at, look, at this point, I am very much on the train of tap two brainstorms are really inefficient as compared to tap self brainstorms. And I'm slowly like going down and down and down on these, even though they are still brainstorms. They're still, you know, quite uh, a you know, fun. Does this deck, it, it, some decks make up for that weakness though? But this deck, this deck's like a standby deck, or so Alpha's like completely right. A standby deck cannot play a tap two brainstorm. Unless. It just makes Unless it's standby combo is like, you know, the bounce like a from hand. Yeah. Like, or, oh, yeah, like, no, the or, bounce from hand. Or bounce from yeah, hand sure, type, sure. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, but um, I've never valued that particularly highly, and I will continue to not value that highly. I mean, so, assuming it's um, also, like, attached to a card that you would value highly, right? Uh, I mean, oh, sure, that's, I guess. That's, that's not really relevant to this card. Yeah. Um, the, the, the first effect is not awful it's fine um it's nothing special but it's fine is this our best brainstorm oh the the blue brainstorm i don't is know the blue, yeah, the blue oh, brainstorm yeah, is the yeah that's right that blue brainstorm is really good okay uh, this card is like um, a victim is... of a circumstance that blue brainstorm is too good this card is again it's fine 
I do not begrudge people for playing a card like this. I just don't like tap two. I don't think I'm ever going to like tap two anymore. Dude, it's OP like, there are people in Persona. Who... Yeah, there are people. Who... No, it's like it's not even it's not even good in Persona. It's like a thing you can do in Persona, but it's it's, it's in... not good. It's pretty sick in decks that change though at level one or whatever. Uh, most decks can't actually make use of that. Like, if your Encore phase changed, then that doesn't do anything. And a lot of cards... Like, imagine like, if just... Summer Pockets had a... Just two Brainstorm that was better than its Salvage mm. Brainstorm. Imagine if Charlotte had a, had a good rest of Brainstorm. I know, right? Now. I know! I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not gonna I'm go saying. there. I, I mean, anyway. it would be better if it were Tap 2, right? In that deck? Yeah, but... Um, it would still be worse than a tap self brainstorm in that deck. No, it wouldn't. It already has a tap self brainstorm. Yeah, and that brainstorm is played. You don't have any other alternatives. And that brainstorm is really dumb when it goes off anyway, so you wouldn't choose an alternative anyway. Anyway, uh, this card is, is fine. It's not, like, great. It's on the verge of being, like, a C+, but... On its own merits, it's not a bad card. Like, I, I can't give it a bad grade, really. Uh, sure, next card. Jibril, um, valuing knowledge above all else. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stage, mill two. If there's a climax there, you may replace the top card of your de opponent's deck with a card in their waiting room. And when you play this from hand to stage, you can ditch a climax to salvage a game character. This fun. is, like, it's a neat combination of effects. I... But that's all I can call it neat. It's not like overbearing or centralizing or super powerful. But this is like a neat card. It mills to kind of give you a bit more, um, a bit more, uh, what is it? A, a bit more range in what you can get. But um, the top effect is rarely going to actually do anything. Well, it is. De it's just a mill two. It, it's just a mill two. That's the thing. I still don't think mill two is. A card that you go out of your way to fit in your deck unless you are so desperate for costless mill you have no other option um but even then that's not a strength of the mill too that's I mean, a weakness it's, of the it's just a nice bonus like this is an effect yeah, yeah. that's pretty good that you would probably yeah, this... run the second the second effect is a car is a effect that i've run on cards with no other effects like it's a it's a perfectly fine effect so i am i'm happy to give it a a reasonable grade it would like, be nice if it had 2k power. Actually, I'd rather take know. it as a vanilla in this set. There's no good zeros that have above 1.5 power. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's uh, really depressing, uh. not gonna lie. Um, yeah. uh, I'm on the verge of giving it a B-, minus, but um, I don't think it's... like Because I, I would always play this card, right? Like, I, I don't think I could find a situation where, uh, not, where like a copy of this isn't randomly in my deck. But I don't think... It's quite there on power level. Anyway. Uh, next card. Uh, oh, oh no. Oh no. This is Jibril, one game. Uh, when this is placed from stage to waiting room, you can clock a card from hand. If you do, search your deck for a game character and add it to your hand. And climax combo. When this attacks, if you have the gate uh, in the climax zone, you can ditch a card from hand. If you do, this card gains... <laughs> Power equal to the character opposite this. So, um, I, I don't know what to say. So the climax combo means you will always, always, always beat your opponent in battle unless they have a 3-5 counter or like they gain power when attacked or some not. Basically, it wins in battle against basically everything, which is neat. But that is not worth a climax slot. That is not worth the climax cost. Uh, and I'd probably rather play Empty Doors than this. And the second effect, I've never liked. I'll continue not to like. It was like the main reason I thought the Goddess deck kind of super sucked. And this being on uh, death is even worse. I don't know. Oh, I have nothing good death. to say about this oh, card. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's on death. I'm like, I've, I have nothing good to say about this card. Wait, it's on um, death? Are you sure? This yeah. is not a... It says on death. Oh my god, dude, this, dude, this is... Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't blame you for giving this an F, honestly. Would I ever yeah, play this? No, I, I don't think I'd ever play this, actually. Dude, this is on a combo, I would play man. It. This is so I would play Can this card make your deck better? 
Oh, I would look. Um, put it this way: if you tech this in in a Yo, deck that's already running gates, you can stand you can by just... this out, and it's like a. Uh, no, you can't. Thingy. Yeah, you can. This It'll is die. well, okay, okay, but why would you want to do that? Uh, it's like a shitty. Sh it's like a shitty search. It's like a. It's a search. It turns your door into a search trigger. What this actually does is, uh, if you have a door, um, and you, <laughs> and you're playing against like Hinologi or similar deck. Sorry, it turns your standby is, into a search trigger. This is like a 17k against Hinologi, and then Hinologi like loses its field and actually, feels bad. I don't think this card is <laughs> runnable. I'm gonna, I'm sweet. No, There's... I'm not gonna give it an F. I am not giving it an F. <laughs> I think I've never seen a worse combo in recent times. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Look, um, if you play against a bad player who like goes all in on field and has this like 13k card and nothing else, then this like wins the game, right? Oh, because your response um, to them going all in on field is to go all in on killing the field. <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. It, it makes you the combo, and then this card dies. You probably don't even have hand to do the second effect. Wait, 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 hold up. Why does this card die? I'm saying, like, on the backswing on his turn, if he kills the card, you probably lost your whole hand doing the combo. Well, who gives so a shit about that, game. man? Who gives a shit about that? Um, like, they don't like the point is if they're that low on cards, which happens against bad players, this just wins the game, but. You're right, this is an awful card. Realistically, it never sees play. Uh, next card. Um, oh my god, was that a rare? Oh my god, that was a rare, what the hell? <laughs> uh, Jibril, Pride of Someone with Power, it's a 1045. When you place Climax to the Climax Zone, it gains 1-5 power. And when you play, this is a different standby for the record. When you play a different standby, uh, if this is in the front row, you can pay 1. If you do, choose another game character and stand it, so... The idea is to stand by out probably like a 2-2 two -two Jibril or something, and then you have a two soul beater at level one, thereby making up for the soul deficit of standby, which sounds good if you hit level one first and they have empty slots. But in every other situation, and you know, in most situations in general, this card kind of sucks. I'm I'm not particularly high on this sort of combo. This is a super good waifu deck tournament combo, though, because those decks all suck, and therefore, um, the best of the sucky combos wins out. I'm giving it the D. Yeah, you would. Alright, next card. Um, Steph, present from the former king. It's a 1-0 climax combo again. 1-0-5-5, can't side attack. <laughs> Uh, when when the battle opponent of this is reversed, if you have red stock soul in your um, climax zone, put one card from the top of your deck in stock, and then choose. Uh, I actually don't know what that card is. Probably another event. It is um, in yeah, put. Um, let me read what it is. The it's one zero a event. Cigarette Ah, uh, I see. All right, so it's like a bad operation tornado. Um, it's a one zero mill event. It's not a counter. Um, but. Basically, this is like a really, really bad version of the Bang Dream combo. Is it? Or You're the stuck. Uh, uh, yeah, but how are you reversing something oh, with yeah, the sure, sure. five five stock Oops. soul? I forgot this has to reverse. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You would imagine if um, it didn't have to reverse. Uh, this would be very playable. Uh, in <clears throat> fact, I think this would be the preferred combo, and I don't think it'd be close. Yeah, if it didn't have to reverse, that'd be pretty nuts. Although the deck doesn't really want its need, want or needed stock, but the current way I play, I don't even use a level one combo. So yeah, I think if it I didn't need to reverse, much, yeah. it'd be pretty strong. I think so. Um, this is not a terrible card. I just don't think you're going to get it off enough for it to be consistent or good. The effect is you know, objectively fine, but there's a lot of opportunity cost there. You've got to play this events. Which is fine, but not ridiculous. And not being able to side is actually more relevant than I want to say it is. So I'm just going to yeah. give it a C- and move on. It's worth noting that the cards that treat other 
in other decks, the cards that treat characters as characters also treat them the same way for events for a lot of cards. Mm. A bunch of events not a downside. A lot of your top check add ditch applies to events as well. I mean, that's just something to note, to look at in terms of this set. Mm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good thing to keep in mind. All right, next card. Uh, Steph, in charge of Elkia's internal affairs. This is uh, the level one standby target. One one six k. If you have two more of a game characters, it's a seven five with encore. Um, you know these cards have grown on me. I'm still never going to give it anything more than a C, but I hate them a lot less now that people aren't obsessively trying to stand by and instead they're using them like you should be, like a, a, a level one stock out that um occasionally stays on the field for a while and gets you advantage. You could make the argument that cards like this are advantages, advantage generating cards in their own right because. Honestly, not many people play cards that beat over this very easily unless they're a super reverse focus deck, and those aren't too common, thankfully. Anyway, like a C is appropriate. Oh, out of, out of curiosity, do you like stand by this out? Is that a goal for your deck? Yes. Uh, this, this deck is really, really good at getting a turn one standby off. It's like the best deck in the game at doing that because you get to top check two mil and top check more. Yeah, so you literally yeah, go all in to try to stand by this deck turn one, yeah. I figured it'd be something like that, yeah. So this card is, it's still only a C, but it is like a fine, you know, it's it's a respectable card. I have nothing against it. Like I do several other cards we've talked about. All right. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Next card, Jibril, Truth Behind the Game. Uh, it's almost as if, like, color doesn't matter or anything so this is a, it's a level zero bomb and when this goes from stage to waiting room you can pay two to draw a card um nah i i'm i'm never playing this honestly like it, it's long past the point where you care about having two stock stock outlets and bombs just you know kind of suck use it to try field that's true you're and not draw, wrong you can draw your event Oh, try fielding in a standby deck feels a lot less good because you can't milk your 1-1 one -one for longer. Mm-hmm. I think stand standby decks want to slow down the game as much as possible. That wasn't really a factor in why I gave it a D, but <clears throat> um, that's still my thought. Like, I think standby wants... Is standby is like a kind of control deck in Weiss, which is a really weird thing to say, but I think that's what it is. I think oh. we're gonna get the wrong idea. <clears throat> Sorry. People are gonna get the wrong idea from that statement, but. Uh, I I think so, but. You, you can deal with um, the fallout. <clears throat> there is a very specific reason I said that, and it's because, well, I'm not going to explain it here. If you really want to talk about it, hit me up on Discord. Um. Slide okay. Next DMs. card is. Yeah, man. Slide right into my DMs. Uh, Steph, with an idea. It's a global 500 for game trait characters. So when your character's trigger check reveals a climax, you can ditch, um, and that card has two soul triggers, so stock souls, draw um, two souls, 2k1s, etc. You may uh, ditch a game character from your hand to waiting room. If you do, look it up to two cards from the top of your deck, choose one and add it to your hand, and the rest go to waiting room. Um, as far as uh, globals go for waifu decks, because I'm not seriously considering this outside of anything but, you know, a waifu deck, this isn't that bad. Like, I, I don't think this is a bad card. But again, strictly like waifu deck or specific theme deck only because. Does this even work in the waifu deck? The waifu deck runs that standby combo, right? Does it? I don't know. Wouldn't it? Um. Well, if you want a global five, you could do worse than this. That's true. Like, even if only half your climaxes matter, uh, this is still like a perfectly reasonable effect. Don't I give globals D's? You probably do. It's a D plus. I don't hate this card. Anyway, next Wait, card. If it is this plus, anime? Cool. It plus? Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Oh, what? It'd be cool if it like paid one to plus. That would be nice. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't live in that world. Is is this anime art? This doesn't look like anime I art. I think this is promo art. Uh, cool. I guess. Yeah, LN art looks. A lot different than yep. anything else. So it, this is not light novel art, I'm 
certain of that. Yeah. Uh, zero zero Steph, uh, granddaughter of the former king. When you place this from hand, to, um, from when you know, when this dies, when this goes, why is everything on death in this set? What is Does wrong with this stand set? Stand by synergy. Oh my god, that's disgusting. When this is placed from stage to waiting room, you may ditch a card from hand. If you do, you can salvage the one one events. Uh, Actually, this, this is, is fine. C plus is, this is the important one. one. This is an important card, but yeah, this the. Is this your best turn one play? Is I'm asking a serious question. Is this your best this, turn one play? The best turn one play is runner, and that runner is nuts. But this is the biggest card you have at level zero. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you use to attack over their runners That's because none good. of your other cards can do that. That's pretty good. I like it. So let's 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 go with this this card. Um, I'm down with that. This card is pretty. It's decent. I think that playing this card is not an affront to anybody. I have no issue with a card like this. 2-5 is actually kind of big. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is. For this deck it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, for, no, just in general, like, there aren't that many cards which aren't dedicated oversizes that beat a 2-5. Because not many people run supports um, in utility-based level zeros these days. Um, yeah, when this play card cards that get big on play, though, so, you know, I mean... Yeah, uh, do they like? I know yeah. Japan likes their mill twos, but uh, whatever. Um, those are dedicated oversizes anyway. Uh, next card, Jibril. Um, <laughs> it's a one zero six five. Damn, uh, okay. It's uh, four five gains five hundred for every other character. I'm gonna keep making the joke of rem remember when this was ban worthy. Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. Don't you remember? Uh, it, 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 it's a it's a bad joke from when multiple people said that they would put um the one zero Ellie and one zero Umi on a pick one of two list when Love Live Sun when Love Live Original first came it's out. So unfair. Uh, well, it was pretty <laughs> it strong. Was... Seven flash pretty big for a well, costless man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like your entire hand. Um, plus yeah. um. Also, double brainstorm and all this shit. <laughs> yeah, this this was also in the um at the point where global soul wasn't like the biggest thing ever, so the games were really slow, and it would basically boil down to how many uh two K one souls the uh they were pretty slow. It oh, didn't start right? until Mar it oh, didn't sorry. start getting bad un until Marika. It really didn't start getting bad before, until Marika. Is this before Nisekoi? I guess it is. Yes, this is before Nisekoi. Oops. This so... was when like. The yeah, this was when the best deck in the game, the best deck in the game was Khan Kole running Shimikaze and uh, Hibiki into Verni unironically, and the games would basically be who drew more two K one souls to kill your opponents, you know, their eight Ks or whatever, or forced counters or etc. Before et my time. Yeah, and the OP part about it was they just brainstorm and if they hit, then it's like your two K one souls did nothing. So you know, uh, the game was dumb back then. Still is. Next card, Steph, Happy Mood. It's a 2-1 level X, and it's a Brainstorm. Uh, it's actually a tap to salvage Brainstorm, which, uh, oddly enough, is something that's pretty welcome on a card um, like a, a level X. If it's a card you uh, don't always want to have on the field, then I don't know where I'm going with this, but honestly, this is just a nice secondary effect to have on a card, I think. I am... Um, you know, I have it's no. A cool, significant... It's a cool card to have in a standby deck, right? Oh, that is that is a good point. You stand by this out, right? Um, you're basically just upgrading your brainstorm to an assist. That's more relevant. Pretty well, sure. If you well, I don't remember exactly what this legendary blue brainstorm does, but I mean, uh, this assist. I think is that blue brainstorm just white. does something on play. So, like, realistically. I mean, there are probably better, there, there's probably an assist that gives more power, but I, just conceptually, this card, this card is cool. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give this a C plus. I like, I like, um, I like this card. It's hard to justify writing an assist though in a deck that is intending to win field. Sure, um, that's fair enough. Um, yep. Yeah. Hard to justify, right? This card's obviously like I think in a lot of sets they would love to have, even if you didn't stand by. I think this is just cool. Because, like, you often have, like, want their other back row, but end up promoting assistance, like, making it into assistance deck because they want to keep true. the brainstorm. I mean, it's a so, cool mm -hmm. way to, you know, uh, take advantage of your field slots in a way that's pretty 
pretty desirable. It's, uh, I mean, it's hard to predict, but I think you can kind of plan for it. Then when it happens, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, speaking of standby, um, 2-2 Jabril. This is a 7-5. It gains 2k if you've got two more of the game characters, and it's got game character encore. Is this playable in the standby deck? Like, do you aim to play this out in the standby deck? Like, obviously, you might... Like, you could consider playing one or two, because if you trigger a standby at level one, this is one of the better things you could feasibly standby out. Uh, and if you... Well, I mean, I you probably aren't, but if you are playing this, um, the other, other standby level one um, combo, because this deck has, you know, eight standbys, if it really wants to, uh, this might be the best choice to standby out as front row. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm not particularly... Yeah. Go on. I uh, ran this for the longest time, and I took insp- then I took inspiration from what they were standbying out in Japan, and it's in blue. It's like a version of this card, but swap the power on that it gets on the opponent's turn to more power on your turn. So it ends up being 11-5 on your turn? Right, it's, and it's got on call. Yeah, I think that is better than this one. And I... Hmm. It's a. No, go uh, on. Like, the deck has like no good counters, right? So if they can kill nine, if they can beat nine five, they're going to beat nine five. And exactly. I'd rather be able That's to what kill I'm their... thinking. Yeah. Like, because uh, nine five is if you, if they can beat seven five, chances are they'll beat nine five. There's nothing in between there. So you may as well go for something that is really big on your turn with no significant loss on the opponent's turn. Like if you were going to have to encore the seven five. You're probably going to have to encore the nine five, except in some very odd specific scenarios, like say, Attack on Titan, um, that's using leftover one zeros to beat things down. But those are nowhere near common enough to justify it. And I think that you probably made the right choice, because eleven fives also doubles, you know, early play killers in some circumstances. Uh, so I'm not yeah, in, in... saying that this kind of profile in a standby deck is only valuable if it can contest, bo- like if it can. Attack if it's defensively into, if, viable. If, it, if it's... Uh, no, I think the offensive power matters a lot more than defensive power for this kind of card in standby decks. In standby decks. Well, no, if you can... If you can um, Because the idea behind standby... The, the theoretical idea, I guess, because there are ways to cheat it, um, the, to cheat this, but the theoretical idea is you standby, win lanes, and then you make up for the soul disparity by attacking to empty lanes. Right. But so like, if your deck does... But if you're hmm? standbying a level 2 card out, right, it's usually just going to win board, no matter, like, how much power it's it has. Um, uh, if turns. you play... Sure, if you play standby at 1-0, specifically, <laughs> yes, you will win that row for maybe two turns. But yeah. no, go on, because uh, because seven five is still a contestable number. I feel. Uh, I mean, this now has nothing to do with these two profiles that Encore once. There, there was a promo that released shortly after the set came out that is like a anti level anti like anti early play suicider that also moves around on the field and standby out that level one because you can just move sounds- it up to die reverse. Or like move it around. It sounds really field. irritating. Yeah, that that sounds irritating, honestly. There's, there's like two really good cards you can stand by. Uh, I think this one got outclassed. I think some people in Japan are even running like four of that two-one chasing card. Yeah, I'd believe it. Yeah, sounds pretty good. It, if it's uh, like an anti-early play bomb, then that makes early plays really shitty. Because you can just move it in front um, of the early play. It's pretty cool. Yeah, like what are they gonna do? <laughs> um. Yeah, no. Uh, If that is the case, then this card is strictly outclassed. But for the English players out there who might not have access to that promo... um, Promo's already out. Promo's already out in English. Okay. Um, For the English players who can't get a hold of that promo despite it being out, uh, the blue one is probably better. So let's go on, I guess. Um, Well, no, if we're going to do that, then I'm going to give this card a D because that's what I give bad standby targets. Okay. (laughs) I want to give it the D. That's... Yeah, I'm sure you do. This is the third Jibril you've said that about, for the record. I'm keeping count. Uh, this next count, uh, next card, Exploding Steph. Um, why don't you run this card? It's a 4K that, um... Oh, your Climax card. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> it's nice. a 4K when, nice. when either you or your opponent plays a Climax, this goes to waiting. <laughs> mm. 
Damn, I love turning yeah, no, this... standby into a minus, man. <laughs> um, for the record, for the record, you can stand by this out. Not that. <laughs> not... <laughs> Yeah, and then have it die because your opponent played the not, climax. Not that this does anything. Um, oh my god. Uh, this Dude, this is a very die. bad You're going to play climax and it'll die after you step. <laughs> but you denied a reverse. Yeah, it's still a minus um, one. <laughs> uh, I'm very upset by the fact this next card exists because I'm fairly sure that's a vanilla. Uh, zero, zero, one k When this is placed from hand to stage, you can get your card to search for... Uh, is it a vanilla? Someone tell me it's a vanilla. Dude, this Let me card figure it is out. Sick. It's a it's, it is a one zero vanilla. Dude, it's on apples <laughs> and then it... that searches for your like, bond token. It's sick. Man. All right, this this card makes your deck worse unless unless you can play four of it on turn one, in which case it's still really bad because you just played four of that card on turn one. It, this is strictly oh, worse than apples because when they're in the drop, you can get them indefinitely. When they're in the deck, no, no, they actually run out. It's not strictly worse okay. than apples. It's it's not strictly worse than apples because apples is a pay one bond. Like this is this is not a plus. Apples is a plus, so they're not even in the same discussion. Really. They're in the same vein, yeah. Yeah. Next next card is a uh, zero. This is not zero two. Uh, this is Jibril. Assist 500, and it's Married Life. This is a common. Um, for the record, this is a rare in um, Bunny Girl Senpai. So, uh, thanks, Bushy Road. Actually, ah, this card's fine. It's whatever. It's Married Life. It's it's a card that you're happy to have in your deck. It's not super great. If you're playing it on reverse combo, I think, um, what's his name? Uh, I, what, what is his name? Sora. Um, main character, Sora, yeah. Um... I think Sora's got an on-reverse combo, so this is probably fine. I didn't know that, Kingdom Hearts right? 3 was in white. <laughs> uh, it, even oh. if it was, I wouldn't play it, because that game is just a large disappointment. Um, Alright, uh, I don't... Uh, it's Married Life, what do you want me to say? It's like a fine card at level... On, on like, turns 3 through 6, and then it's just bad otherwise. Alright, um... Gabriel, bath time. This is a one zero four five oh, that are. Uh, people... Oh no. Um. Anyway, he'll come back. I'm sure. People, uh, unironically play this card in. Wait, what? Uh, did did something happen? I heard a bunch of static. No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Sure. No. Um. One zero four five. Uh, 1045, when it's placed from hand to stage, pay 1. If you do, choose the cost 0 or lower game character in waiting room, put it in any slot on stage. At the end of the turn, send that character to memory. So, the point of this card is to pull out the 4k that goes to, uh, you know, that just gets gets rid of itself on climax play, and then send it to memory. So, so it can never bother you ever again. Um, this is basically a straight plus. I think this is a pretty decent card. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. If there was some sort of recollection synergy, this would be even better. But as it is, this is, like, just a fine card. Note that you have to win board with the car. That you to go to, um... To go to memory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh... You know, people keep telling me this, this card is awesome. I've never played around with it because like okay so like it's, it's kind of like that question where you like where do you draw the line is a plus actually good and like i i very rarely feel like something that way like it, it pluses in every way i would consider a plus a plus cannot advance my game state with the effect like the effect just does not let you advance your game state you're, you're kind of just like doing something for this one turn and you can't really search for things you're going to do next turn or in later turns. Because actually, I mean, like, I don't know, really um, wait, but what like, if you summon the uh, event? You could summon the climax this, right? combo. I think people. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could summon the event bond with this, right? And then it dies. And then yeah, but, like a... but some, summoning, summoning a card to die is not actually good. Like, it's not great. Um, it's fine. It's still a quote unquote plus, but it's not great. Uh, 
So yeah, so many of the so I, I think this card would become really good if I could find like some crazy synergies with it. But like so many of the Barners one, so many reverse combos one. There would be something like really is there any card that exists that would be really cool with this effect? Like I kept thinking about this. Yes. Card. Yes. Two, two cards down, there is a there is a card that's OP with this effect. Um <laughs> Oh. Um. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Next card. So this this is a vanilla. Um, the next card down is a one zero seven k with no downside. If you pull it from the bin with the uh, with the one zero pay one. Um, otherwise it is forcing your opponent to cancel once. Um, that all sounds good to me. This is a S S plus. You, know, you can stand by this. <laughs> Uh, you can stand by it, yeah. Um, if you, you know, rendering the really one zero part of it, you know, irrelevant, but you know, seven K. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this is a dumb meme. There really isn't much worth for anything that gains this much soul. <clears throat> uh, especially like there's they're not even trying. Like there's no way to remove climaxes. There's no well, no good way to remove climaxes. Um, this is for the and stand, honestly, this is for stand. This is for uh, sorry, standard. This standard. Is the, this is probably one of the most important cards in the uh, remove all eight of their climaxes deck. I don't think so. Why not? This is like extra copies of your like win con. After sure. all their climaxes are gone. Yeah. Okay, but why don't you just play a two soul? That still wins the game in that situation. No, it doesn't. Don't give. Don't give it a D. Like. What? Why are you giving it a D? Oh, well, I guess it's Jabril. So, yeah, all right. You can give it a D. Give it the D. Um, <laughs> God. Uh, uh, next, when I saw the next card. card. Well, okay, is it actually F? Like, my D is kind of unironic here. Would you, I don't... Okay, does this deck... I mean, this card makes you... your deck worse. This, this card literally is never played in any deck ever. Like, What's the worth? You never... <laughs> You never want to use this. Like, if this is your standby target, this could have been a better standby target. If this oh. is pulled out with the one zero I memed about before, then, oh my god, that is actually this might actually be the best thing to pull out with that, isn't it? So play um, one zero seven k. Opponent is say zero four. You attack for one hundred and fifty soul, but they stay at zero four, and now you have these seven k's. Wow. That that are gonna attack. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. He's he's got a point. He's got a point there. That's like an unironically fine situation to be in, but that's theory. not a situation I ever. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that's not gonna happen. Um, I'm I'm sticking with F. <laughs> I'm not a believer in the uh, stick them at level zero strategy. Well, that sounds pretty godlike. Uh, especially you when you set up though. Like you 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 help them mill out. I'm I. Is she even double these? I guess probably. I don't I know. It's anime, man. She's pro she she's probably like boobs, a, a like... she's probably like a B cup dude. It's anime. Um. Okay. Next card. Uh. Two one Jibril. Uh. Two five counter. When you use the backup of this, if you have a game character, give a character one K for the turn. Um. The only thing I'm going to talk about here is how flavorful it is that this card manages to beat the other Jibril combo because this is a three five counter. That beats over um, your your opponent's Jibril being your power plus three k. Um, so she has the answers to her own problems. Yeah. I I don't Gee. have anything to say about oh, this. Oh man! <laughs> All right, I, I'm down Come on, for man. I'm down for that. Come on, man! This is like a such a whatever card. That's my fetish. Even in a standby space. deck. Even in a standby deck. Not Stand with it though. Mm, <laughs> you're not wrong. You could do that. Uh, okay, next card. Steph loses appearance. Uh, two one six k gains one k for every other game character. So it's maybe a ten k if you're lucky. Probably a ten k. When you place this from hand to stage, if you have four more game characters, you can stock a game character from waiting. Dude, it's a two zero ten k power card. I don't hate cards like this. This is like a fine card. Wait, it doesn't even like do the blind stock thing. It stops no, it from doesn't. Waiting. It's straight from game room. I'm from That's kind yeah of... waiting room. The, the problem, like the problem I have with 
And I'm speaking a lot in context of the set, right? Like, if you're playing a standalone yeah, yeah. deck, you cannot play more than four characters on the field to do so. Even, like, when you don't have the standby in hand, because you, you have to plan for the trigger situation. It's just, they, they put this awesome card in that I would probably consider playing a lot of sets in a deck that I think always wants to have standby as one of the two card assets. Yeah, I mean, that's fair to rate it a D on the on that merit. Yeah, I'm though. I mean, that's why we brought him on, right? Um, yeah, I don't disagree with that. I yeah. just, you know. No, let's let's go with that. This is, like, not great in context if you're trying to plan for something like that. I'll give it a D plus um, for the waifu deck factor. Is, the is waifu, deck waifu, is waifu deck is <laughs> Yeah, the, the waifu like deck a, is a standby deck. Uh, you know... Imagine if you could pull this out with the... Uh, oh, that doesn't matter because it goes to memory. That's so sad. Because this is a cost zero, right? No. Right. Um, oh, here we go. This is what we all came for. This is the discussion we want to have. Uh. Um, <laughs> two, three events. Materialization Shiri Tori. If you have none of this card in memory, send this to memory. At the start of your climax phase, if this is in memory... You and your opponent play a game. Recollection. Yeah. <laughs> At the start of your opponent's turn, if this is in memory, put this in the waiting room. Replay, play a game. The turn player declares 0, 1, 2, or 3. All characters of that level are put in the waiting room. Then, if you didn't have a cat, Oh, wait, how's that go? Then, if no characters were put in the waiting room this way, uh, both players choose a character of that level from the waiting room and put it in any slot on stage. I, I don't even know where to start. Like, the I've never, I still, counter. I've still never played with this. I, I don't intend to play with this. It has some really stupid little niche uh, effects, like completely wiping out your opponent's early plays uh which matters if you're like if your field is all two one steps or some shit right or you just play this before you play your early plays duh mm -hmm. with yeah. your bazillion stock yeah so oh wait with this yeah, 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 yeah. what yeah yeah with this you get to do it once and then your opponent gets to do it once and then it goes to waiting room um so you get to either nuke the field or add something from you know bin to hand so something you could feasibly do is like remove all level zeros and then uh because it's already climax phase any of your brainstorms or whatever have already been used and then the onus is on the opponent to have another brainstorm if they want to brainstorm that turn so this is extremely expensive removal in that sense another thing you could do is very easily get a tempo swing if your opponent has all early plays or even like a level three assist announcing three when you have no level threes on field means that you get to swing into empty which is pretty dece uh you know two 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 yeah go on um big deck coming out goblin slayer oh, you know card capture in english minus two soul so the play is like the play is like every you zero. move up two back rows every zero, uh, sunshine, uh, GGO. You move up your two back rows. You play a character. You play this event, and then you announce like three. Lose all their cards, and on their turn they yeah. kill your front row. But you're not actually minusing when they kill your front row. Yeah, because your cards are supposed to be dead anyway. Mm. So this is a um, it's a quote unquote hard counter to uh, Arisa Bang Dream to. Uh, the 12 EP GGO to EP Heavy Love Life Sunshine uh, to the Neg 2 Soul Goblin Slayer, I guess. I, I'm not convinced well, that's Sunshine really would strong or whatever. Sunshine their cards with. Uh, I mean, I, I guess. I, 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 whatever. That's still like easy pickings for one of your level 2s because obviously your remaining cards, at least some of them should be able to deal with your opponent encoring stuff. Like... Like a two one ten k, for example. That's fair enough. I mean, if you I destroy mean, Love Life Sunshine or, or something, yeah, yeah. I, I just think Sunshine can... has better. I mean, the other decks probably just get destroyed, right? 
Yeah, 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 sure. But um, if they have a like a Kanan saver, then well, okay, sure. They get to save probably a. Uh, I don't even know what they'd save. I think they save a yo. They'd save a yo, but then they'd be forced to either counter or lose it anyway, probably. I mean, I would counter um, save that card. If you have a counter, sure. Why wouldn't oh. you? With that play, I mean, with that play, I don't know if it's worth including. Because like, when I talk to other people who play no game, they say like this is a two-of type of card. Card by level two. Granted, the deck's really good at finding events and adding them to hand. At a specific point at level two, your field needs to have all died in the front row and playing a standby deck that might be hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I don't know. I don't know. I played with it. It's just some people at our locals play no game. They say, oh, this is going to be the nuts against Goblin Slayer. <laughs> okay, man. Um, look, I think this card is actually... It has a lot of potential. Because you can very easily... Because you know it's in your deck, your opponent doesn't necessarily know it's in your deck or even know what it does. You can very easily build your game state to where it will be backbreaking. It's kind of like Reinhardt in that sense. Not quite as impactful, but very similar from in my mind. Um, and uh, you only play it when it's super good. When it's not super good, you just don't play it, I think. So in that sense, it's a lot like a stock swap or money counter. Obviously not as good as either of those cards. But in some cases, I think it might actually be significantly better because it, you know, wins the game on the spot against an unprepared opponent. I'm going to give this a fairly high grade rating because I think that this card has a lot of raw power. I do think that you do need to play in a certain way to maximize this. And you like this is made even better if your opponent has no idea what's going on. In that case, I think this is maybe one of the, you know, the best cards you could possibly play in that situation, aside from Stock Swap. And as a result, high grade. I'm gonna go in between the two of you. I mean that's I fine. In like I am B C plus. Yeah, that is exactly in between. Uh speaking of cards that are finish off level threes that are left on the field, this card. Um Oh man. <laughs> this is fourteen K. You can't counter over this. Um and this is also like it survives no matter what, because you can't name four. Um, but the problem is your opponent can anti-change it. <laughs> um, so, this is not as good as it seems, <laughs> but it's, it's cute, I'll say that much. It Something. is cute. I really wish it was good. Like, I really uh, wish this was too. better. Yeah. It's cool. Um, wow, if this was like... Sorry? I never, I never read this card until now, actually. But all I know is... It, it goes to level four. Yeah. I'm it was $20 like, because eight, eight standby was really, like, a big hyped thing in Japan because they over eight standby. And this card is, you know something you can play in the Shiritori standby deck. Mm, yeah. Honestly speaking, there's no reason behind it. It's just Yuta inflation, so don't think too hard about it. Um, Alright. So. Yes, it is a box top up here. <clears throat> uh, next card. This is the uh, Cigarettes event. If you don't have a Sora or Shiro, you can't play this from hand because this is the key to Humanity's Hope. Those two are the key, etc. Mill two, and then choose a level X or lower character in waiting room added to hand, where X is the sum of the level of cards put in the waiting room this way. So, if you mill a level one, level three, you can get anything. If you mill a two level zeros, you can only get level zeros. This is fine. Um, it's obviously much better in context where you can salvage this with the climax combo, but just as a card, it is a perfectly reasonable pseudo hand filter. And I don't feel bad playing cards like this ever because usually you can get something fairly decent because, you know, you put decent cards in your deck and that, therefore you'll get a decent card. 
Uh, not that much to talk about. Like you said, you can get events a bit easier by digging this deck. But um, not by so much more that I'd give this a much higher rating. Next card, the man called the Foolish King. 1-1 one, one event that we alluded to earlier. Um, look up four cards from the top of your deck. Add a game character you find that to your hand. Put the rest in waiting room. Then this goes to memory. Then during your turn, all your game characters gain 500 power. If this was costless and didn't have like the recollection clause, I think this would be a better card. But I'm not actually sure. I think the power might be relevant for. Us. I think I have to. Get <laughs> I never. I. I, I never say that, right? Like, I never I never consider that. Well, I mean, it's not like the stock matters, right? So. Yeah, because, oh. like, your top end is so stock light. Yeah. Mm. So for people who test a lot and play a lot, I guess, um, you'll start noticing that the powers actually come up in this very, very beautiful, almost, just a type of thing. Um, like, against Milky Holmes. If you have one of these in memory, acting over their Ellie post counter, due to that game's power only on your turn, the eleven five attacker. Uh, if you if you, if you only had on the field, so setting up for a new stamina turn, a lot of situations. But magic number five hundred power comes up for a lot of magic numbers. It comes up. It makes your seven fives five hundred bigger than their seven fives against other matchups. Stab up mashups. Dude, this, this, this guy's awesome. This guy's yeah. fucking great. Uh, I agree that 500 power tends to matter when you're like operating at an extreme. Like an extreme of like a range of power, right? So like if you're either at the high end of power or like the low end of power for like the kinds of cards that you're going to be interacting with. Yeah. It doesn't even cost the slaughter on field. So you don't have to play global fight, right? It's like, you know, this card yeah. makes two K counters much better than fifteen hundred power counters. Well, uh, we that's I'm just, I'm just, that's I'm not that's being... that's well. I don't. What uh... you say actually? <laughs> what you say is like it's it's weird because yeah, it, it's a joke. But <laughs> the thing is, if you if this card is ever good, then two K counters probably are kind of good yeah, because I that agree. implies you're playing yeah. the sort of deck where <laughs> it'll matter. But, um, yeah, 500 power doesn't really matter until you're already at the quote-unquote extremes of power. So if you're, if you're pushing 8k on a fence without much support at level 1, then 500 power, 500 power probably does matter. So, uh, yeah. I also want to say that this, my position on this card is not, that incons not inconsistent with my position on 1-5 like, counters, because like, this is like in every lane, whereas, you know... A 2k counter is not. So 1,500 like, so, power? I mean, like, the overall impact is just higher on this kind of card. Look, the 500 power here is not 500 power, right? Like, it's not. 1,500 <laughs> power! <laughs> That's the reason why I, this, this 500 power is okay, and, like, good or whatever, and the 500 power from a 2k counter is, like, irrelevant. I just want to make that So what you're, what you're saying is 2k counters are good. Uh, I think counters. you're saying 2k counters are bad, dude. They're just counters. They're just counters. <laughs> counters counters, counters suck, are OP, dude. Know. Counters are OP. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's the end of red, and uh, we'll be back to do some other color at some other point. Thanks.